Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to discuss how you deal with missing data in MATLAB. Missing data is a really important problem for anyone working with machine learning. It is extremely rare that in a high dimensional space that all of your features will have values all of the time. When you have data missing, it's important that you fill it in in a way that doesn't introduce bias in your models. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of how you deal with these missing entries in MATLAB. If you like this type of content, consider giving us a subscribe and hitting like on the video below. So to begin with, let's ask the question of how do I represent data in MATLAB as missing? So if I imagine having an array, a let's say one row, by five columns. If I want to represent a particular value here as missing, actually the easiest way to do it is just to fill it with the value of missing. You'll notice that I used the word missing, but MATLAB interpreted it as not a number. It turns out that the missing keyword will actually fill in the appropriate indicator for that type. So for a uh, double, it's not a number. But for a date, it turns out there's another flag called not a date that it will get filled in with. This type of trick will let you automatically deal with this for time series data, for example. And this is quite helpful. Let's say, look at a bit of time series data. Let's have X take some random values and Y take some different ones. Actually, you know what? Let's have a uh, linear relationship. So let's let uh, something like that. And let's go ahead and make the middle value missing. So if I make a figure and I plot X against Y, what you're going to see is there is a missing data point. So particularly at X equals six, right there, there is a missing data point. And the result was that when you plotted it, it seemed like there was an awful lot of the curve missing. This is something you want to be careful with, actually. Missing data can make your graphs look extremely funny. See, this makes a little more sense. All right, next I'm going to talk about a command that lets you automatically fill in things as missing. So before I used the missing keyword and the not a number keyword, but actually sometimes you will have a different indicator. So to give you a good example, sometimes a digital to analog converter will fill in all ones for every bit that it has. So for example, if I see the code 1023 on a 10 bit analog to digital converter, that's often an indication that something has gone very badly wrong with it. And I would like to treat that data as missing. So if we look at our variable X from before, let's say X of six is equal to 1023. So I want to automatically get rid of this 1023 and replace it with missing. There's a command standardize missing where I can automatically fill in the value 1023 as if it was a missing value. And now you can see it's automatically filled it in. This isn't so useful if I just have one such indication, but let's say if I had 10 or 20 indications or that, that something was missing, various error codes, or alternatively, if I wanted to have every single value uh, or column in a table treated differently, the standardized missing will actually let you do that. You can actually say what should happen for each variable uh, in there. So we, of course, can identify the areas which are missing. So I have is non of X, and this gives me a logical array. So if I wanted to fill them in, I could simply do uh, X, I could replace X1 is equal to X, and X1 at is non of X is equal to zero. And we'll take a look at X1. And this, for example, is called zero filling. This will automatically use logical indexing to replace any value that I want replaced with a zero under the assumption that zero was a good value to have if I don't have any other information about it. It turns out MATLAB gives you a number of different commands to do this for you. In addition to is none, I should mention I also have is missing, 
does the same thing. Isnon only works for doubles, but is missing will work for other types as well. I can do this fill operation using the fill missing command. And what this will do is basically fill the missing entries using a particular type of behavior. So what I was doing, the fill missing was a constant value C. So how that looks in practice, fill missing X constant zero. Uh, fill missing, oh, fill missing, there we go. Um, so this gets the exact same behavior we had before, but actually I can do other things too now. So I could use previous, for example, previous must be a positive integer. Oops. There we go. So I can use previous. Uh, and you'll note that now instead of getting the values zero, which are quite far away from what they should be, so six and 12 would be reasonable numbers to use here, I get four instead of six and 10 instead of 12. That's pretty good. I could also fill it in linearly. And now I get exactly what the result is because I don't have any noise in my data set. There's also, you could use splines to fill it in or cubic, uh, piecewise cubic splines. And these get the exact answer. So all of this seems like a pretty reasonable approach here. Like this was something that will get you roughly what you would like out of it. But let's think a little bit more about our data. Here I had two dimensional data. For time series data, these techniques basically work. However, you're not always working with time series data. So let's imagine for a moment that I have not time series data, but a two dimensional input. And let's uh, visualize this on screen right now. What you can see is that in this case, axes one and axes two are linearly correlated with each other. In the case that they were independent, pretty much all of this stuff works. However, if your features are correlated, you end up with a situation that putting in, for instance, the mean value of those features is a really bad idea. If your features are correlated by filling in, for instance, the mean value on screen right now, you would get the data points shown here. You'll note these data points that have been replaced aren't data points that are possible in the original distribution of the features. So filling in using any of the strategies that we've discussed here will actually result in an incorrect result. They simply are inappropriate ways to model the data in a multidimensional space. For solving multidimensional problems, you often have the case that this time series approaches won't work. So let's make a concrete example. Let's say that our feature set is given by 10 examples of three different features. So in this case, we would have a certain fraction of these missing. So let's go ahead and make features at rand sample. Uh, there are 30 possibilities. Let's make, let's make uh, roughly a quarter of them missing is equal to not a number. Okay, so we have at random about 30% of our data missing. So if that's the case now, we have a difficulty that I need to have some strategy for dealing with these. And probably the easiest thing to do is actually just discard the rows which aren't complete. And MATLAB gives you a command for doing this. So I can actually rm missing and then you specify the dimension, in this case one, and it will automatically give me just the rows which were actually complete. This isn't necessarily the most ideal thing to do, but it is actually surprisingly the, a, a common approach for this. I can also throw out features which aren't 100% complete. And you can see here we end up with one. So one final thing that you might want to do is you will often need to calculate some statistics on your data set in the case that there's some missing values in there. Now you might not want to throw out all of the values that are 
available. So I'm going to just introduce two little tricks that you might want to use. Let's say I wanted to take the mean of row two. So, or sorry, column two. So if I take the mean of it, it's not a number. There's actually an alternative command called non-mean, which will ignore the values, the, the not a number values. There is also something called, uh, uh, sorry, it's non-sum, which will also do this. Non-mean to me makes a lot more sense because uh, you're adjusting the number that you're averaging over, whereas non-sum, I don't feel is a particularly robust thing to do. There are also built-in tricks that you'll also see occasionally, like for example, you can use sum with an omit mean to get the same result. Eh, I mean, pick your poison, right? I think in the end, the approaches I've talked about here cover the main ways that people tend to deal with missing data in data science in general. If you want to do something more sophisticated than what I've shown here, that's often necessary, but there's no one size fits all solution for it. So there are some more advanced techniques. You can, for instance, build a model of each variable as a function of all other variables. Key to them though, is they all require that you have some idea on what the behavior of the data is. And none of them work particularly well in all cases. So unfortunately, dealing with missing data means that you have to understand your data well enough to build a function of it. And that's more or less what machine learning is in the first place. That's it for today. If you like this type of video, we make a new one every week, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you can think of any other ways of dealing with missing data that we left out, please feel free to comment about them below. I know there's a ton of other options in other languages in MATLAB. I think we hit the main ones, but let me know what you think. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you next time.